Continuing our example from the previous video, I want to calculate the EVSI. Before we talked about the EVPI, the expected value of perfect information, but now we're going to calculate the expected value of the sample information, where the sample is the consultant's information. The formula is very similar to the EVPI formula. It's the expected value with the sample information, assuming that information is free, minus the expected value without any information. So we take the 49,200 that we calculated from our decision tree in the previous video, add back the cost of the study, $10,000, to get uh, 59 two, and then subtract out from that what we'd earn anyway without any information, we said we'd go with the small. So 59.2 minus the 40,000 gives us a bump of $19,200. That's the expected value of sample information. So on the average, over the long run, that's how much value we get from the consultant study, assuming it were free. But of course it's not free, because cost is 10,000, so subtract that off to get the uh, 9,200 bump. But on the average, over the long run, then, you'd never pay more than $19,200 for this study. Uh, of course, everything is negotiable. Instead of paying them $10,000, maybe you could present this information and say, well, it's really only worth $5,000 to us and negotiate the price down. But uh, is it perfect information that we're getting from the consultants? Uh, on an earlier video, we said, no, it's not perfect information because they were wrong sometimes. Okay, so we can calculate the efficiency of this information by taking the EVSI that we just calculated over the EVPI that we calculated previously. So 19,200 divided by the EVPI is 60,000 gives us an efficiency rating for this study of 32%. So you can think of it this way, we're 32% of perfect information. So it's not godlike information, but there is some useful information there. Um, you could use this efficiency to compare this study perhaps to another type of study and then choose the, the study that, that has the, the higher efficiency rating. Maybe you could compare a survey to a prototype or something like that and maybe the survey is better because it's more efficient. Okay, that's it with this example. Our next video we're going to go ahead and work with utility. Sometimes it's not a good idea to use expected value or expected monetary value because there's a certain amount of risk that maybe you can't tolerate. In this example, we were going to lose $20,000. Or if we paid for the study, potentially we could lose $30,000. And maybe that's just not acceptable. So we want to study utility theory and put the utilities on the tree in place of the payoffs.